what would you look for? What do you look for in a home inspector? Are pre-listing inspections worth it? I think really is my last name. It's really fun to say. I think that's the best time to yeah. do a pre-listing inspection. Okay, I'm outside here. Uh, we're on a property inspection right now, and uh, I'm with my good friend, Doug Tig Tig, and uh, We've been working together probably close to another 100 transactions over the past three years together, which is pretty nice. I know I'm on his referral list with me and another home inspector, and um, he's going to tell you a little bit about. <laughs> he's going to tell a little bit about himself, and then uh, we'll go into just a few questions about home inspections. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Chris. Uh, so my name really is Doug Tig Tig. Tig Tig really is my last name. It's really fun to say. I think that's why he's successful. <laughs> and uh, probably. <laughs> but I've been doing real estate for about five years now. And previously, before that, I was uh, a on Young Life staff. Young Life is a out, Christian outreach ministry. And I also got to serve for five years as the chaplain for the Houston Dynamo. And so that has been a lot of fun. And so those jobs both were very meaningful, right? And so I loved relationships and and kind of creating that and winning trust and uh, serving people. And so real estate was a easy transaction and transition because it uh, still allows you to serve people and and then it is a meaningful job and it's not just the transactions, it's the stories and it's the people and uh, getting them into a great home and making sure that it's a good home and stewarding that process. And so honestly, the the relationship between a realtor and a home inspector is, is hugely important for that reason too is is uh, when someone is entrusting you with that uh, honor uh, you want to make sure you're stewarding the process well and having it the, the home inspected and all that kind of stuff so it's been a great agree. relationship I have to agree with that uh, uh, too as well because whenever I work with you you know there are agents out there that are just worried about the transaction not so much is this a good home right. and I think that is a very good point because I do see you show up on a lot of your home inspections, especially on the older properties. This one's 1990, mm -hmm. so you're going to have a lot of little things on it. And I do see you show yeah. up on these properties. So it shows that you care that you're there at the last 30 minutes or hour while we go over the inspection yeah. report. Especially so, first-time home buyers, which is a lot of my clients are first-time home buyers. And so a lot of them are, I mean, again, you can look at a report, you can read a report, but the relationship of, and we'll go into a little bit as to why I chose you guys. Um, there's a whole lot more value in being there and listening and hearing the issues and 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 just kind of holding their hand in some sense of okay of of a home inspection recap. So one of the main reasons you use our company is because like at the end that that thirty minute go over the report at mm -hmm. the end. Yeah, because for sure. I agree. Reading, I say this all the time, reading those home inspection problems is a lot different than how a home inspector will actually explain it because this 1990 home is going to have a lot of general maintenance items. Right. You're going to have caulking around windows, you're going to have some water heater issues, you're going to have a lot of little things, but in the big picture for the size of this home, what is this one, 5,000 square feet, I Close think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so 5,000 square feet in the list that we build, I would say it's actually kind of minor in the big scheme right. of things. But if you see our report, it's like 40 pages long. <laughs> and that, yeah. that gets scary, right? And this is actually a reload, uh, reload deal to where a report has already been done. Okay. And so, yeah. you know, having my first time home buyers and having their dad read through it, it looks overwhelming. Right, and then they even asked me at one point, "Should we have another inspection done on it?" And hands down, the answer is yes for the what is about to happen of the recapping and going over verbally with an inspector, a okay. trusted inspector that right. they can again not just read the report, talk to the inspector and go, "Hey, what do you think?" And yes, you wrote that in the report, but what does that mean? So that that to me is. A huge value yeah the meaning of what is actually written Correct. the interpretation yeah I understand that completely because I do get like these odd questions I was like well it's in the report but yeah. you know they could take something and just run a million Correct. miles with it Correct. Um, yeah okay so um, another question and this is going really big in the home inspector world and it's starting to it's mostly up north but it's starting to transition to Texas is are pre-listing inspections worth it? I grew up in the home inspector world. My dad 
what brought this up, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, and just recently it's been a big topic, is pre our pre-listing inspections. Home inspectors have been trying to push push it, but I've always talked to all my top producing agents, and most of the time they say, no, it's not. And uh, I was wondering, what's your opinion on it? The only times that I would suggest to have a pre-listing in, you know, inspection is if the homeowner has absolutely no clue what they've done with the house. Okay. And maybe they bought the house and it was foreclosed and they've literally not done one thing to it. Okay. You know, and maybe they just painted it and put a new carpet, but they don't know behind the wall kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, funny thing is that that's my house. I bought it foreclosure, <laughs> but I have. I've done maintenance to it. I've made sure that the house has been taken care of. Right. Uh, but in the end of the day, it's you're going to see the problems. Most folks will understand, oh, there's a water leak or there's something that they've lived through and understand that there are these problems. Um, I think at the end of the day, someone is going to, you know, if someone's going to make an offer on the house, they're going to want to do an inspection anyway. It's the right. same thing as this house. Again, in some sense, it's a reload deal that there is a report already done, mm -hmm. but I still wanted to have my own inspector yeah. come out and do it. There's so some people probably not. Yeah, so probably not in the big. Yeah, mm -hmm. so some people say it like reduces the seller's liability or maybe increases the value of the home by getting a a um, a new home inspected or mm -hmm. not even a new home inspected. Sorry, a pre-listing inspection. Right. And I I don't know. I just I almost don't even see the value even as a home inspector. I mean, do you? If I know that there's, if if me personally, I've got a house that I know probably has a lot of problems okay. that I want to make sure, again, electrical stuff that you kind of know has maybe been done incorrectly, but, you know, again, maybe. But, right. again, to me, a buyer's going to come in and do the inspections and then still ask for that kind of stuff. You're so ask for it anyway. So it just, I probably, I haven't okay. really done one on any of my listings, but okay. um, unless, again, somebody's just not lived there forever and they don't know. But yeah. no, most likely again, they're good. someone's going to come in and do an inspection anyways, so you might as well deal with those problems at that point. Unless you just know that there's some major stuff wrong, right. you want to get an inspector out to go ahead and say, "Hey, what are all the what are all the things I need to go ahead and do now?" Okay, yeah. So, yeah, the only time that I actually see that it's uh, worth it in the big scheme of things is uh, I almost got to say it's like if you have a poorly decorated home, right? You walk in, the home is just hideous. And they're not listening to you, mm -hmm. right? So you hire those uh, home stagers, and mm -hmm. then they come in and give you the bad news. I'd right. say the same right. thing happens with you walk in, you have like cracks, water stains, and you notice it. And you're like, hey, you know, I think you have your, your inspection report's gonna come back bad, and you know, you want to be ready for that. And they don't, they don't believe right. You. And the homeowner is oblivious to they're it. They're oblivious yeah. to it. So I think that's the best time to yeah. do a pre-listing inspection. You know, they're trying to push it on every sale in the home inspector world, and I just don't think it's going to work, and I really think it's going to reduce credibility because you're going to have two different professionals right. looking oh. for two different things, and you're going to get conflicting reports, and you're going to get some issues down yeah. the line. Yeah. But, all right, cool. Um, do you have any uh, thing, last things you want to tell anybody out there? What? If, oh, yeah. What would you look for? What do you look for in a home inspector out there? That's going to be because most of my audience, I'd like to say they're agents, but yeah. I got to say it's it's probably home inspectors. <laughs> well, so what I have seen in home inspections, and they're all over the place. I've seen those who, again, they're great at reporting things and putting it in there and making the report, but they're not great. It's kind of like a doctor to me. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of doctors who are great at the logistical things of writing things in and doing the tests, but then to explain it is almost more valuable than just putting it in a report, Communication. right? Communication. Communication and calming a client down and being able to answer those questions right. in a very informative way. Right. So to me, that's what I have found with A Action, with all your inspectors, uh, with any inspector that I'm looking for, and I've seen it the opposite end, where the house is fine, but right. the inspector has made it seem so bad that my client is now so freaked out that it's hard to get them past a certain point. Right. So, and I've seen that as well. And so, again, those are the ones that I specifically I don't want inspecting <laughs> any houses. <laughs> yeah. of mine. So I say this all the time, you know, and I say it to all the people I train. You can actually be 
a, a good home inspector, you could find everything on a home and be a poor communicator, and that actually makes you a bad home inspector. Correct. So you go in, and you're, you're terrible at explaining the problems, you're kind of rough around the edges, right? and you're just like, well, I did my job, and leave, right? I, in my opinion, you're a bad home inspector. And it's yeah. vice versa. Yeah. You can be a great communicator right. and someone that people like, but then if the reports aren't very good, then <laughs> yeah. you didn't find yeah. it. So again, to me, I've, yeah. I I have found... It's like you needed one right in the middle. Yes. Yeah, like, well, or just both. I mean, you, the, the the reality is I you have to have both. You guys are detailed and have been able to explain. Communication, yeah. So if you're looking to improve your skills as a home inspector, the communication is just important as the knowledge that you have out there. So Correct. that's really important. But uh, yeah, thanks for sitting yeah. down to do the interview. Um, if you have any real estate questions or real estate uh, needs, uh, contact Doug Tig Tig. I'll put his information down here at the bottom. And then again, always, if you have any home inspection questions, please give me a call. I'm Chris with A Action. Thanks, guys. Bye.